Take time to see. Take time to see. Our people are so much in a hurry. And that's why we lack revelation. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. That's why we lack revelation. We don't take time to see. Don't be in a hurry. Mm. This was what the Spirit of God said to me concerning our nation. He said that faith is difficult for many of our people because of impatience. Uh Impatience. What What does impatience show? Impatience shows that a man has not identified himself. Because when you identify yourself, you are settled. Acquaint now thyself with God. Show yourself to be conformed to his will. Be at peace. Your agreement settles you. So if you find yourself trying, you know, running around, trying to make something happen, always in a hurry, it means you are lacking agreement. When you agree, you settle. Remember also that agreement means you're believing. They that have believed have entered into faith. Uh, uh, Into rest. Right? So, a lot of our practices are more like rush, rush, rush. Rush, rush, rush. When will God promote me? When will God do this? When will God do that? It's just we lack revelation. Take time to see. It doesn't matter that you do 20 things. If there's no revelation in one. Amen. Amen. Because revelation is what connects you to heaven. Revelation is what connects you to the power of God. And where there is no power. The people are not helped. Amen. Amen. We are interested in the power of God. That's what the apostle Paul said. He said that my teaching. And my preaching. My speech and my preaching. Was not with enticing words. Of man's wisdom. But in demonstration of the Spirit. Why? So that your faith will not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the. But in the. How did. How was he able to get people's faith to stand in the power of God? By his teaching and his preaching. Amen. Amen. By his speech, uh, 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 speech, teaching, and preaching. That's what's lacking. Many people like to show all kinds of stuff. But is your preaching reflecting revelation? Is it bringing revelation? Notice what the subject is on that subject. My speech and my preaching. Right? That's the subject. Your speech, your teaching, and your preaching. That's what causes people to put faith in the power of God. Amen? Amen? So we must be people that take time to see. Take time to see yourself well, well. Take time to see yourself well, well in the word. Because if you don't see yourself well, well, your message will not deliver well, well. Amen. Take time to see yourself. It takes time. Don't be in a rush. That's why some people pastor churches that are not supposed to be pastored by them. They left places. They're supposed to be trained. Because they're in a hurry. I want a ministry of my own. God told me that he will make me. See, you see, you see, ministry is not making a man. Ma- ministry is making people. It's making people. Ministry is not about a man. I know our people here, we like the big head, you know. This is my, the special man of God. We are okay with honoring men of God, but the ministry is really about lifting people. Bringing people into the enjoyment of what Jesus did for them. Amen. Amen. It's so vital that we understand this. Don't be in a haste. Don't be in a haste. Are you here? Don't be in a haste. When you identify yourself, all the haste will end. What are you rushing for? You know who you are. And you're walking in who you are. And it will help you. Can you say amen? Amen. It's so vital. So vital. So vital. That we understand that. 
If you find yourself rushing, if you find yourself rushing, it means number one, you have not identified yourself. Number two, your vision is not clear. Clear vision brings stability. And when you are stable, you are not rushing. Amen. I remember something that my spiritual father said, God spoke to him, that this race is not a sprint. It's a marathon. That means you don't finish it overnight. The reason why people try to finish overnight is because they lack revelation. Amen. Amen. And don't go to people looking for, okay, well, This man, the the power is flowing through him. So I'm going to go now and collect power so that people will know that I am called. It's not the things you do. It's not the, uh, (laughs) how do I say it? It's not the the show you put out. Uh, The abracadabra eh, that you do that demonstrate that you are called. It is the words you preach. Mm. It is the words you preach yes, that demonstrates that you are called. Mm. Amen. Amen. It is the words you preach that demonstrates that you are called. Yes, Amen. Amen. Praise God. So it's very important that we understand that. How do you get to the place of bringing that word? Get it in you first. This is the part that I want to Reemphasize before that comes up for some things. To get that word in you, you need divine connection. You need divine connection. There are people that God put something in for you. See, the Bible says that every joint supplies. A man who lacks spiritual connection, divine connection, will lack certain things that would have enabled him to become successful. The same in the local church. People who don't have a local church are strangers to the covenant, even though it belongs to them. They act strange. They act strange because they're going from one man of God to another man of God. We should encourage people to find local churches where they can be taught. Amen. Amen. Where they can be taught. And we're not all of it. See, we confuse people when we say, well, if you don't come to my church, ah, you won't function. Mm. Who are you? Eh? (laughs) Who are you? Mm. So what we need is giving people the understanding. Not every person that comes to your church is supposed to be there. Yes, sir. Your heart should be, I will put myself in position Mm. to make sure that people are in places where they can get revelation. You see, people coming and not being with you does not mean you're bad or that they're bad people. Mm. You have to discern where your place is in the body. Mm. Because if you're not in the right place, you will create inflammation. With inflammation comes, comes joint pain. Amen. Amen. There are some of you following different ministries, following men of God. I want to do this. I want to do that. Well, if you don't have a revelation, somebody else's revelation will not power you. Are you hearing me? It might bring you close to light, but you need your own revelation to power your life. You see why this is very critical that we have the right identification so you have your own revelation that is revealed to you. Why? Because now it becomes the message that you preach. It becomes a message that you preach. You preach it every day. You preach it all the time. But the point I was making is that you need who God has joined you to bring out that revelation. I know for me, I wouldn't walk in the place we're walking today if it wasn't for Pastor Jay that God used to nurture that up. Amen. Amen. Are you here? 
So we have to discern where God has us because you will grow quicker. You will develop quicker. Amen. Amen. When you identify, it brings development. Let us not just go looking for churches where people's problem will be solved. God is looking for churches where people will develop spiritually. Spiritual development is the cure for instability. So if we're wanting to help our people, we're going to have to bring them to a place where they grow spiritually. And you can't grow a person spiritually without yourself developing. Your people will develop to the degree that you yourself is developed. It's not about preaching and teaching. The Apostle Paul said, copy my lifestyle. Look at the way I live. Can your congregation look at you and see your agreement with God? Is it visible? Because it will affect every area. Amen? Amen. So I just want to encourage you with those words before that com- comes up and why they are tweaking that to find out what happened. Amen? Amen. So it's important. Yes, sir. It's important. Yes, sir. Don't be in a hurry. Mm. Amen. Amen. You can't go from evangelist to apostle overnight. Mm. Yes, sir. Come on. Eh? Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. I used to be introduced to people one day they're evangelist, the next time. It's not even up to two months. <laughs> they're the prophet. <laughs> See, don't be in a haste. Grow first. Grow first. Say first. first. Grow, grow first. Grow first. You see, a lot of these things you will address with spiritual development. I see people all the time. My ministry. I have a big church. You can, like uh, Grandpa used to say, you can have a big church, but it might be filled with fugitives. <laughs> Amen. You see, the, it's not about numbers. It's about growth. If the same people are coming to you for the same prayer, every time, you're not doing your job. You're not doing your job. Because your job is not so they can come to you for prayer. Your job is so you can grow them. So they can pray and help other people come up. But it begins with you. It begins with you. I said it begins with you. Can you say amen? Amen. It begins with you. You can control everything. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, that's what I just want to encourage you with right now. Praise God. I think they can still hear us, Dad. They're still working on that. So, hallelujah. This is the broadcasting. It's going out. I think they're catching it over live stream on something. Is it this, this right here? Yes. Yeah. Good. All right. So, we'll just stand here. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you get what he said? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Slow down. Get the revelation. Take time to feed. Meditate. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, um, not taking the time to get the word in you before you release it into the circumstances of life is like taking a recipe that calls for tomatoes and saying, I don't have tomatoes, I'm going to use tomato seed. Come on. You can't put tomato seed in a recipe that calls for tomatoes and it tastes like it's supposed to taste. Amen. You got to take the time to plant that tomato seed Grow the tomatoes, and then you can put the tomatoes in the recipe. Yes, Amen. Amen. Do they have tomatoes here? Yes. Yes. So, yes. So that's what he's talking about. Get it inside of you. Grow it on the inside of you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, because we're uh, limited in time before lunch, let's take some time and answer some questions. Would that be all right? Yes. Uh, um, I believe they can hear me over live stream. Is that true, Justin? We've got uh, a sound here. So um, I want to just take a couple of these. Uh, some of them are real simple. Uh, here's one, and I'm just having Pastor Ike to stand here. He might have something to say about a couple of these. But the first question was, can people receive miracles without their faith being active when the gifts of the Spirit are uh, operational? Uh, the answer is absolutely yes. 
Uh, if you look through the Gospels, Jesus ministered to people and he ministered to multitudes. And uh, if you study carefully, which I've done, I took a, I, I've spent years studying the earthly ministry of Jesus and his ministry to the sick, because we ministered in the healing school at Kennedy Ministries for all those years, and so it was quite a, a focus of our ministry for a long time, and still, still we minister to the sick. But uh, one of the things you see, if you break it down, at least 75% of the people he ministered to, he ministered to by their own faith, not by gifts of the Spirit. Yeah. When I say gifts of the Spirit, I mean like gifts of healings. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, there is a, the Bible says there's different ways to receive healing. That's right. And different methods. And, uh, but uh, I would encourage you, at, well, let me back up. The gifts of the Spirit will operate and work at times, as the Spirit wills, remember 1 Corinthians 12, it'll work as the Spirit wills uh, to, to minister to the sick. And when a gift of the Spirit is in operation, you can see this in Jesus' ministry, you can see it in other places, the person might not even be operating in faith. Right. At, G, at the pool of Bethesda, Jesus ministered to a man. He said, take up your bed and walk. And he took up his bed and walked. And whenever they found him, because it was a Sabbath day, when they found him carrying his bed, they said, no, no, can't do that. He said, uh, uh, you can't carry your bed on the Sabbath day. He said, well, the man that healed me told me to pick up my bed and walk. Right, right. They said, who's that? And he said, I don't know. <laughs> How can you have faith in Jesus when you don't even know no. who he is? Right. That's a gift of the Spirit in operation. That's right. A gift of healing in operation. Amen. It wasn't his faith. How can you have faith for something you don't even know? You don't even know the one that you're talking to. Right. But so, so you do see that in the Bible. And I can tell, stand here and tell your testimonies in our life. Yeah. However, there's no guarantee that that's going to come into manifestation. Yes, yeah. So you should teach your people to use their faith. Amen. In fact, to be honest with you, those gifts of the Spirit will op to, to minister to the sick without. Uh, the individual using their faith, that'll operate more for people who don't know anything about the Word of God yeah. than it will for people yes, that do know something about the Word Amen. of God. So, Amen. 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 If I had time, we'd spend a lot more time on that, but we're limited, so I'm just going to leave it at that. But yes, absolutely, gifts of healings can operate. And uh, But, uh, you know, I, I, I would say you can sit around, like, like the man at the pool of Bethesda, you can sit around the pool of Bethesda for years and years and years waiting for a gift of the Spirit to be in operation and do without. Right. Why would you wait for that when you can take God's Word and believe God's Word mm -hmm. and use your faith and get it right now? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So Amen. just teach people to use their faith. That's right. Um, uh, let's see here. I'm trying to get the ones that are easy first so, <laughs> so we don't so we can get to as many as possible. Yes, sir. Um, well, that one's going to take some time. Let me see here. Um, here's one. In 1 Corinthians uh, eleven ten, the Bible speaks about a woman covering her head because of the angels. Who are these angels? Well, they're the angels. Right. The yes. angel, God, God's angels. Yes. Are these angels dead? Absolutely not. They're alive. Why are some women not uh, uh, covering or using head tie, head tie. Head tie. Head tie in the church... Again. Again, in other words, today, I guess. Mm -hmm. Why are some, some women not covering their head? Well, uh, I wish we, if we had time, we could go through all that quite extensively. You read 1 Corinthians 11, which is where this is, uh, where, where Paul addressed this. Um, he talked about the head covering as a sign of, her, of the wife's submission to her husband. And you read down through there, and, it was, and, and you read, and you know a little bit of background, what he was addressing. In that culture, mm -hmm. prostitutes... And women of the evening, if you know what I mean, mm -hmm. they would not cover their head. They would shave their head. Mm -hmm. So they didn't have anything on their head, and they also shaved their head. And so for a woman to not, in that culture, listen to me carefully. In that culture. In that culture, a woman that was not uh, uh, wearing a head covering or, or a woman that, uh, let's put it this way, that shaved her head or had a, a head uncovered, that meant she was a prostitute. Right. That's what that meant in that day. Well, uh, uh, and so that's, that's not being respectful to the marriage covenant if a woman wants to do that in that culture. Say, in, in that, that culture. culture. In that culture. Now, the point we've got to address is, is that still for today? Well, Paul said at the very, I think it's the last verse there mm -hmm. in 1 Corinthians 11. Maybe mm -hmm. somebody can look it up. But mm -hmm. 
I think it's the last verse. He said, people that are contentious about this, we have no such custom, no, not in the churches. Yes, now, what's he saying there? He's saying this is a cultural custom. Right. This is not a, a truth that, that is for all time that all women need to have their head covered. Yes, Amen. Am I making any sense? Yes. In our culture, in the United States, for a, a woman that wears a head covering, people look at her funny. Like, yes. You right. know, why she got... But see, that's just culture. Right. You understand what I'm talking about? Amen. Uh, there's different things today that symbolize a prostitute or somebody that's not faithful to a covenant. Right. You know what I'm talking right. about? Right. And it'd be the same thing today. Right. It'd be the same thing today. It wouldn't be very respectful to her husband to be walking around looking like a prostitute. Right. Amen. Amen. But Paul just simply said in the last verse there, he said, we don't have, he said, I'm not preaching this as, as a law for every church. Right. You can read it yourself. Right? Amen. Amen. That's right. So if culture says that one thing is, is what a prostitute looks like and a, and a married woman who's honoring the covenant mm -hmm. with her husband shouldn't, shouldn't look like that, shouldn't, mm -hmm. dress, shouldn't dress like that. Right. That's the principle. Yes. It's all about covenant. That's right. And concerning the angels, I don't have time to get into that, but I just would, I'll, I'll just say this. Angel, th there are symbols of our submission to one. Now, like today, the wedding ring. Right. Is that in your culture too? Some, some, but some in the United different. States, a wedding ring is a symbol of the covenant. Right. And a man that doesn't want to wear his wedding ring, like for example, when I came over here, I thought, well, you know, all the customs and all the, I mean, you know, going through airports yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, and all of that and, you know, being around people that that's, that's their year's salary right there. Mm -hmm. You know, do I want to take that? <laughs> and, uh, you know, how, it's, it's a temptation. Somebody finds it in the hotel and I'm right. not in the room, you know. And I thought, I don't know if I'm going to wear it. But then I thought, wait a minute. I honor my wife's, my, right. I, my covenant with my marriage, so yeah. I'm going to wear it by wedding. That's right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So Amen. I could do a lot more. I yeah, could say I a know. lot more I about know. that. I know. But uh, that's good enough, I think, for, for, uh, for, yeah. for now. Um, as a pastor's wife, I'm convinced that this message I'm hearing uh, here is the true gospel, and I have the desire to be coming to grow more in faith, but I have a challenge. I tried to convince my husband, but he didn't accept and encourage. He he didn't accept it, and it discouraged me to keep uh, come again. And I am very disturbed and in my spirit. What can I do? Uh, advise me, please. Um, wow, another one. We 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 don't have enough time. Pastor right. Ike did such a good job, and he got on a roll, and I thank God he did. But uh, maybe, we can, maybe we can just address it real quickly. Um, disunity in marriages is one of the biggest strategies of the enemy in the body of Christ. That's right. Absolutely one of the, one of the biggest. I, we see it in the United States. I'm sure this, this dear sister is saying that it's an issue here. Um, spiritual disunity... Uh, uh, let me let me let me back up and address it this way. If you are single, and I, I know this sister's married, but I'm, I'm going to talk about that. But if you're single, it's not enough that he and you're looking for a spouse. If you're yeah, a single yeah. lady and you're looking for a spouse, or a single man, you're looking for a wife. Mm -hmm. It's not enough that that person has received Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. That doesn't. That alone doesn't qualify them for marriage material. Amen. So, it's not enough that they can speak in tongues and go shaka bakaya. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, Amen. Sir. Yeah. There has to be more unity than that. Yes. How can two walk together except, except they be agreed? Yes. Amen. Amen. So there, there needs to be a unity. The Bible talks about the unity of the faith. Yeah. It talks about uh, uh, unity between husband and wife. There needs to be unity in spiritual things as deeply, and to be honest with you, I tell people in our church, if the person that you're interested in marrying, I'm going to address marriage here in yes, a minute, sir. but if the person, because so we can fix a lot of this, if people, yeah, if people have some higher standards when they, when they marry. Yes, sir. Yep. Um, if the person that you're marrying or, or interested in marrying or interested in dating if they don't go to a church that preaches the same thing, or our church, they don't have to go to our church, but if they don't have the same convictions yeah. and don't go to a church that preaches the same thing we do, 
or let's put it this way, that you believe, that right. you stand for, yeah. then you are opening the door to the devil to create this unity before you yes, even sir. get married. That's right. Yes, That's right. You need to have a higher standard than yeah. just he, he, he's saved and he can go shaka by you. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He needs to have some, some renewing of the mind. That's right. That, that one of the qualifications for a spouse is that they're renewing their mind just as the, the same just level like you. degree yep. that you're renewing your mind. That's right. The renewed mind is a high qualification yes, for, yes, for yes. a marriage partner. Yes. Now, they might not exactly have their mind renewed to the degree you do, but they better have equal hunger. Yes. Because they can catch up if they're just as hungry or hungrier than you are. That's right. Amen. Amen. And so I'll just address that side. But when it comes to the marriage itself, um, oh my goodness, I mean, we could take, uh, the Bible says, like for example, in 1 Peter chapter number 3, to a wife, uh, let me see if I can find, um, bring my, you've got a cell phone here, or an iPad, go to 1 Peter chapter number 3. Verse number, I believe, verse number, uh, oh, is it seven or, or somewhere up there? He talks about if a, if a husband doesn't uh, agree with the word. Mm-hmm. What verse is that? Verse seven? Even by conversation. Mm-hmm. That's, that's you, you husbands. Okay, go on over to verse, uh, where does it say to the wife? Address the wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, da, 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 da. Somebody holler it out. Which verse does it say? Likewise, you wives. That's verse 7. That, about, no, 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 that's husbands. Where does it say, likewise, ye wives? Yeah. Likewise, verse, verse 3, one. verse 1. Yeah. First Peter 3, verse number 1. Yeah. Likewise, ye wives. He's talking to a, a wife of a husband. Mm-hmm. Be in subjection to your own. Let me come over here where I can get mm-hmm. this on the mic. Yes, sir. Be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word. Mm-hmm. See, right there we are. Right. They may also, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wife. Right. Amen. Amen. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. That means reverence for God. Right. And even respect for them. Respect yeah. for the husband. That's right. Um, who's adorning, not let be the outward adorning, plaiting hair, wearing gold, putting on apparel. That's not saying don't do that. Right. I mean, if, that, if we're going to say that verse says don't do that, then we're going to tell, we're going to have to say to the women, they don't, they shouldn't put on clothes. Right. Because he included putting on of apparel there. Yes. We believe in putting on apparel. Yes. Amen. That's a, that's a good place to say. Amen. Yes, yeah. amen. And he's not saying don't plait the hair, don't don't adorn with makeup or jewelry or something like that. Right. He's saying don't do that without doing adorning the inward man. Amen. You can be beautiful on the outside and ugly on the inside. True. And that's amen. what he's saying. Don't be ugly towards your husband right. who's not being a doer of the word. Who wants to, who wants, what husband wants to, to serve the God you serve if you're all ugly and nasty and mean toward it? Amen. So Amen. that's what he's saying. Likewise, you wives, there's a, there's a, there's a, if you look at this closely, be in subjection to your own husbands, that's a attitude of submission. Yes. And if any obey not the word, they may be won by the conversation or the lifestyle of the wives. So he's talking about winning them over. Yes. Notice that winning, that they may be won. That's not forcing. That's no, not coercing. That's winning them over with your sweetness. Amen. And your attitude of respect for him. Amen. 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 And, their, and your lifestyle uh, with a chase conversation. So, like I said, it's, it's hard to even do this justice yes, in just sir. a short yeah. time. But my point here is, don't badger him. with If he's not coming into the light of the word you're coming into, don't badger him mm-hmm. and hit him with the word. Mm-hmm. Pray Amen. for him. Yeah. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. And live out a, a, in other words, show him, the, show him your spiritual growth because you're coming into the light you're coming into. Right. Show him that with a lifestyle that is appealing to him. Yes. Amen. You can win him over. There's a difference between winning him over and coercing him. That's right. <clears throat> Badgering him, preaching the word to him, telling him where he's wrong. That's not going to work. That's right. Amen. 
Amen. Don't preach the word in, in, in your words. That he, notice he said that if any obey not the word, they may without the word. Without, without the, the word. word. In other words, without you pointing the word, pointing your finger at him and preaching the word to him. Right. Well, you know, the, the Bible says this, and you're not believing this, and you don't blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That, the Bible says without a word. Mm -hmm. Without the word. Yes. Without, in other words, don't preach it with your mouth. Preach it with your lifestyle. Right. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And like I said, there's so much we could say there. You want yeah. to jump in here and, yeah. and we could preach on that for three hours. I know. You got any? Sometimes the women make it like a prayer project and they talk to all, each other. My husband is this. No, that's that man is the devil. That man, and we have to pray for him. That's unscriptural. That's unscriptural. That's unscriptural. <laughs> it wouldn't work. Talking about your marriage problems to some Let other it, woman yeah. is unscriptural. Very. Talking about it to your mama is unscriptural. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. You, you and your husband Amen. talk together. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. And that doesn't mean stay there and be abused. No, we're not talking about uh, we're, abuse. We, no, we're not we are not talking about that. It's just about protecting the union because ladies have a way of just carrying things. I just need somebody to tell. Talk to God. Don't bring your children into it. Mm -hmm. I've seen women where they make their children their comfort. So they're sharing with the children the trouble with the man. Mm -hmm. You are extending the devil's access to the next generation. Yeah. So now the children are going to have a certain picture of their father. And that's dangerous. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah so much. I, yeah. I mean, I would like to say so much, but yes, sir. Um, just know that, like, like he just said there, <clears throat> there's, there's, really, there's really a lot of temptation. Wow. I don't want to open. If I open it, I'll go for another ten minutes. But it's okay. Um, They're not I ready. think it's. I think it's sufficient what we said. Sure. Yes. Um, unity is huge. Yes. Unity is huge. Yes, sir. But if somebody doesn't walk in the light of the word, you've got to walk in the light of the word. That's right. Amen. Amen. Now, you husbands, it would be wrong for you. To tell your wife <clears throat> you can't go to church right. <clears throat> because <clears throat> you can't go to a, a, a church that's feeding her. Whenever you're holding her in a church that's not feeding her. Mm -hmm. Boy, that went over real big. Amen. Come on. <clears throat> um, so, uh, husbands have their, have, their, they have their wives clamped down. Mm. And they think, you're supposed to submit to me. Uh, or they say, you're supposed to submit to me. Submission is an attitude. It's not always an action. Amen. Wives should have a submissive attitude, but sometimes their husbands are asking them to do something that is unscriptural. Right. <clears throat> They've got to obey God. Amen. You understand what I'm talking Amen. about? Yes, sir. And uh, so, but that's, that's a whole nother. The, the whole thing that governs the marriage is the love walk. That's right. The whole that the love walk governs all natural relationships <clears throat> between God's people. The love walk. What would love do? Amen. Amen. And love doesn't seek to control anybody. Amen. Love doesn't seek to control your husband and control your wife. Yeah. By badgering them, by telling you absolutely I forbid you to go there to that church. Amen. 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 You're, you're hindering. You've got to realize uh, you're treating God's daughter that you're, you're treating God's daughter bad. Yeah. And if you treat God's daughter bad, you're going to have trouble with her father. That's right. Um, anyway. Amen. <laughs> I don't want to open that can. I know. I know. <laughs> it's the love walk. Yeah. It's the love walk. Meditate on 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Amen. And read it in the Amplified Version. That's right. It'll show you how to treat one another. Yeah. Just practice things that bring you into unity. If you will do that, just find, even if it's one thing, find one thing that brings the both in unity and practice it. If you practice it long enough, it will start flowing into other areas. Yes, amen. Be amen. sweet to one another. Be sweet. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Can anybody say amen? Amen. Yeah. Here's a question, and like I said, we're barely doing these justice, but we got to keep moving. What point do you stop praying for a sick person when, 
with faith in the person is not responding. Well, you can't do it for them. Mm -mm. I mean, if somebody doesn't want it and doesn't doesn't believe it and doesn't doesn't want you come talking to them about it, you're not you're not called to make them receive it. Like he said, you're called to go preach it. Right. And if they don't, if they're not interested and they're not responding, then just move on. Amen. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Is it totally? Oh, here's one I could take another hour on. Is it totally wrong not to have a spiritual father? Um, I could take that question two different ways, so I don't know which way the person is asking it. Um, if you're asking it from a place of, because I could understand somebody maybe could say there's so much abuse of these things sure. in, 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 you know, around where I live or, where, mm -hmm. you know, in my circles or whatever, mm -hmm. that I'm just not interested. Mm -hmm. And so a person doesn't want to get involved with that. I understand that. If that's right. where that's coming, uh, this question's coming from, I can understand that. Who wants to get involved with some kind of abusive relationship? Right, right, right. So maybe that's where this is coming from. Um, or. Uh, pardon? Mm -hmm. Or the other side. Or the mm -hmm. other side, which is what I kind of thought it was coming from. Yeah. Is it totally wrong not to have a spiritual father? Somebody just as rebellious and wants to, doesn't want to submit to anybody. Right. Uh, if you're writing that question from that standpoint, yeah, that's wrong. Yes. Because you're a part of the body of Christ. Right. Um, when Pastor Ike walked in and I greeted him this morning, his, I, I greeted his whole body. I, I, I hugged right. him and said good morning and so forth and so on. And I noticed his whole body was connected. That's right. I noticed his arms were connected to his torso and shoulders. And, you know, his head and his ears, everything's connected. His feet were connected. Yep. I, noticed that, I, I noticed that this arm wasn't floating in the air out here by itself. Right. <laughs> Just beside his body, it was connected to. The, see, that's, that's right. the way the body of Christ is. The body of Christ is completely connected. connected. Yes. And where you're joined is where there's a supply. Amen. So why would you ask a question? Is it wrong not to have a spiritual father? From the standpoint, like like I said, somebody could ask this at several different, mm. from from several different places. Yeah. But it's why would you ask a question? Is it wrong to not have a spiritual father? From the standpoint of rebellion against something God's trying to use to bless you. Mm. Right. Amen. 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 If it's coming from the standpoint of there's so much abuse of that, and I'm not interested in that, I understand that. Yes, sir. Yes, if sir. If it's coming from the standpoint of there's no one really that's qualified. Mm -hmm. In the sense of they're, they're mature enough to be able to help me. Mm -hmm. I can understand that. Right. But yet God's got somebody for you. Yes, That's God right. Somebody. Amen. 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 And so you want to say anything? Because I can yeah. take that question several sure, different ways. I know. Because sometimes people say, well, I don't need somebody. I'm yeah. the bishop. I'm the this or whatever. Yeah. Everybody like that said is connected. So what happens, there have been many abuses, but we can base our decision right. on he's been abused so I don't need anybody else. Right. Because right. what that will mean is that you're going to deny the rest of the body, you know, something God put in you. Because having a spiritual father is not just one way, That's right. it's a two way. Mm. So if you don't participate, you withhold your supply. Probably because you were offended or something that happened. So when you withhold it, you're causing damage to the rest of the body. Because the rest of the body needs you. Exactly. Yes. Amen. Yes. So just because he, he's been abused does not mean that you shouldn't participate right. or find where God set you. Yeah. I discovered too that many of what we call spiritual connections or spiritual fathers are, are relationships we put in place. Yeah. God, come, you will be my son. Come, you will follow me. See, it's not divine if that's the case. It is God-given. That's where so many people fall into error. That's why one day you're my man of God, the next day somebody else is my man of God. It, you can't change like that if it's something that God put in place. Amen. Amen. Um, yeah, so um, seek, uh, seek God about where you fit. Amen. Because basically the question is, is it wrong to not have a spiritual father? Well, it's wrong to not have the supply that God has from you from other members of uh, other parts of the body of Christ. Amen. 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 So it's, it's, you know, people have abused the message of prosperity, for example. Mm -hmm. 
that doesn't mean I'm not going to have anything yes, to do uh, with money for, yes, for right. the rest of my life. That's right. Or the message of prosperity. Mm -hmm. um, people have drowned in pools of water before. That doesn't mean, well, for the rest of my life, I'm not going to have anything to do with water. Right. <laughs> See, that's not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's excess. Yes. Amen. Amen. Don't let the devil scare you out of the blessings of God Amen. because of excess and so forth. Yeah. Amen. 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 Praise God. And having a spiritual father or being in a spiritual relationship does not mean you are less than. Oh, my God. It doesn't mean you don't have it. That's just divine connection. See, that's why it's important to know who you are. Because when you know who you are, you're settled. You just function in the system of God. Because people take spiritual things and they turn it into carnal things. Because they measure spiritual things on carnal reasoning. Well, he thinks I'm nobody. Now I have... No, that doesn't mean you are less than. It's just the divine connection that God gave you to bless your life and gave the other to bless their life. Amen. Yeah. You can still be connected and be fathered and still be a big person. Yeah. Amen. Your, your value is not based on that. It's yeah. based on the blood. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, I'm not going to talk more about that, but yes. guess this is the last one that we'll address here. I think it's the last one I have. Um, what are the differences between the pastor, bishop, and overseer? Um, how many hours do you have? I know. Um, <laughs> now, this, this, is asking, this is asking a question that the Bible, this, this is asking a question about church government. You know, uh, and that's a bigger subject than we can really get into right now. It's almost dangerous to even Stop. say anything because people will take you wrong and they'll mm -hmm. misunderstand you. Yes. But if you want to be literal, literally, in the, script, in the New Testament, and I can prove this to you with seven different scriptures. Mm -hmm. So don't come to me and say, that's not right. Well, you get ready for an earful because i got some scriptures for you. <coughs> but uh, what is the difference between the pastor, bishop, and overseer? Literally, now hear me out because you could get upset at this because there's another side to what I'm going to say, all right? Everybody's going to be fair to Pastor Jay this morning, right? Amen. Uh, literally, there is no difference scripturally. The term pastor, bishop, and overseer are used interchangeably from one place to the other to mean the exact same office, which is the pastoral office. Yes. And I can prove that to you, and, uh, and, but I won't have the time. I don't have the time to do it. But, however, is it wrong to maybe use different titles to identify maybe a person who's overseeing more than one church? Uh, you know, for example, uh, maybe, maybe there's a man that pastors a church but he's, he's grown in his ministry. He has uh, much experience and he's got a lot of wisdom and he's got a lot of uh, uh, scriptural knowledge and he's, he's uh, grown in his ministry and he can help other younger pastors and maybe the, the, the denomination or the organization says, would you be one of our overseers or whatever terms they use yes, here mm -hmm. to help us to, to take care of these pastors? They have needs, they've got questions so forth. And we're going to call you an overseer. That's fine. If yes, you want sir. to use that term, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm. Right. You understand? Yes, so I'm not saying it's wrong to use those terms because really what they're doing is using different terms to identify a different uh, yes. position within yes. the organization. Yes, sir. Fine. Fine. You understand what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. So uh, because uh, having people that speaks into our life is scriptural. Yes. And if you've been in the ministry for a while and you can help some younger ministers... And, and the, the organization wants you to help do that or whatever, and they give you a different title to help identify you, that's fine. Mm -hmm. How many of you know that we shouldn't be all caught up in titles? Right? Yes. Amen. Amen. That, Amen. That's Amen. something we do need to address. <clears throat> Sometimes it's all about titles. I got, yeah. I got this title. Yeah. I don't really care. I stand in a couple of different ministry offices, and people don't call me very often, most of those ministry offices. That's yes, fine sir. with me. I yes, don't really sir. care. Yes, sir. My, my reward's not in somebody calling yes, me that sir. title. Amen. My reward's in faithfulness. Yes, Amen. Amen. 
Amen. I Amen. Think we need to. I, maybe you want to say more about the titles. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a while. I think our culture here tends to navigate towards title. Mm, yeah. That's why even in the villages we have people chief. Chief one, and I, I jokingly would say chief one by one, you know. It's just everybody has to be a chief. But what many people, it goes back to identification. When you know who you are, title means nothing to you. Because the world will call you all kinds of titles, and if heaven doesn't recognize you, it means nothing. It means nothing. Amen. I remember... There, there was a time during the election in some place. And people were into like, we have to do this, we have to do this. And God said something to me that helped me recognize some of those things. He said, you can make a history on the earth that heaven has no recognition for. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So, title is man-made. Man made. So, you know, there are things that work for the gospel, for the offices, but don't make it your quest. Because I've seen people, what I've noticed here in our country Mm -hmm. is whenever somebody gets a title, they stop growing spiritually. You you can't teach them anything anymore because they put their title as if it's their achievement. And when you preach the word, they look behind you. Would that hear? Are you guys listening? Small boys, are you hearing me? You see, that's, you see, that's wrong. That's wrong. That's the problem. That's why titles are like, oh my gosh, why? It's not used to show importance. Titles are actually assignment. It's work. It's work. It's work. It's not to say I have arrived. See, it's the mentality we see. I've seen people that own businesses. If you own business, this will help you. They come to do work. And you have a client whose time is very important. And he wants you to get the job done. So you bring your boys to do work. And you sit down on the phone watching some kind of drama while the boys are working. And the client is needing you to complete quickly. What stops you from putting the phone down and make yourself available to finish the work for your client? See, we take some of these things to extreme. I can't touch anything. I tell our people, I sweep, I do anything. See, it's not just title. It's a mentality. And uh, so, I I would exhort you to seek to avoid pride. Yes. Pride is what we're really talking about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we can say so much. <laughs> Let me finish the question. That was only the first part of the question. <laughs> what are the differences between pastor, bishop, and overseer? Because some of our bishops and overseers are not behaving as pastors. <laughs> according to 1 Timothy 3, 1, 4, and 5. I noticed they didn't identify themselves because they don't want their bishops to know. <laughs> but, um, Anyway, um, yes, there are qualifications, scriptural qualifications. He's referring here to 1 Timothy 3. Those are, that's, that's one of the list of qualifications in the New Testament to be in the office. Being a, really, I, he's not limiting it to just pastor. Mm-hmm. To be in a five-fold ministry office. Right. There are qualifications. Amen. Amen. Um, some of our bishops and overseers are not behaving as pastors. That's the responsibility, whoever's over them, mm. to fix yes, that and address that. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 That's not your responsibility. If, if it's the person over you, that's not your responsibility to address them on that. Uh-huh. Amen. Right. You got to recognize the chains of chains uh, authority. Of yes, sir. And, and honor, honor of the, the levels of authority. Mm. You understand? Now mm. that doesn't mean you have to submit to something to some some guy that's unscriptural. He's out, you know carousing around with other women or yeah. you know, being unfaithful and not, not, doesn't have good character and cussing people out or something like that. Right. That doesn't mean you have to stay in that organization. No, sir. Right. But that's the responsibility of the people over him to address yes. this. Yes. Now, not everybody's perfect. Yes, sir. You understand? Yes, sir. If, if a bishop or overseer is, is, is somebody that you're seeing some faults in, that they're not perfect. 
Well, welcome to the human race. You're not either. Amen. Yes, so uh, everybody that, that's in the ministry should be going back to that list of the qualifications for ministry in 1 Timothy 3. There's other places as well. And they ought to always be examining themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. And wherever we see that we don't measure up, <clears throat> we don't give up and quit. We just go to working on that area. Amen. Yes, Amen. Because we're all growing spiritually. That's right. That's right. I am. Are you growing spiritually? Amen. Me too. Amen. Some of you don't want to admit it, but you, you've not arrived. Amen. So you're growing spiritually. Amen. So, you know, um, you, you, there's so much I can say about that, and I'm taking away too much time, but um, you just have to realize there are qualifications for ministry, and there are things sometimes you just can't stay submitted to. That's you, right. You have to leave the organization. That's right. But, and, but don't leave causing a stink. Amen. You know what I mean? But yes. Is that, is that something they would understand? Yeah. yeah. You know, <clears throat> gossiping and telling the faults of that bishop or something like that. Let God deal with that. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. Before his own master, he stands and falls, not right. before you. Amen. Uh, amen. Amen. So amen. zip your lip. Don't, don't spread all the faults of other people. Mm -hmm. Christians are bad about fault finding and, and spreading the, the faults of others. Right. Other people's faults. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You could cause a, a young Christian to stumble. Right. Amen. Amen. Get praise in here. You, you know, you know some things. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not just about, you know, you seeing fall. The Bible says you have to think in terms of the body at large. Protecting the body because somebody said, I want to expose the evil. I want to expose the evil. Well, Jesus is the head of the church. If there's an issue, you can live quietly and pray. The Bible said that the prayer of the righteous makes tremendous power available. So instead of gossiping, you can pray. Why? Because you have the interest of the master. You have the heart of the master. You don't want anything that will ruin the rest. And because of that, you petition the master. He said, do, and he will honor your prayer yeah, yes, instead of carrying it out. That's the system of the world. Yes, it's not God inspiring you to destroy his house. Yes, it's the enemy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, touch not mine anointed and do yes, my prophets no harm. Yeah. It's a very dangerous thing. Yeah. Let God deal with that. Yeah. Let the people who God set over him over do that. Them. Yep. Yes, amen. I mean, if it's a, if, if it's a God thing, the right. organization is a God right. thing, something right. just a man-made thing. Yes, yes, yes. And, and people don't care about people's character and stuff like that. Well, yes, then you, you don't even belong in that organization. Right. But if it's a God thing, let God deal with it. Let those who are in charge deal with it. And if you can't submit to it, you've got to go somewhere else. Amen. And keep, keep, don't, don't destroy the body of Christ. Amen. With your mouth. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.